Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for May 23rd, 2012. On this week's show, a new device non-invasively tracks cell flow using broadband light. A study of quantum dots in primates deems the nanocrystals safe for now. Three telescope interferometry advances black hole observations. The first instrument for the James Webb telescope is completed, and laser beams are transmitted via satellite. A new optical microscope developed in Israel reveals much the same information as a traditional blood test in real time, but by simply shining a light through the skin, no harsh and short-lived fluorescent dyes are needed. The device relies on spectrally encoded confocal microscopy, which creates images by splitting a light beam into wavelengths from red to violet. Currently, other blood scanning systems with cellular resolution do exist, but they primarily rely on bulky equipment or potentially harmful dyes. Using the new microscope, the blood flowing through a vessel in the lower lip of a volunteer was imaged. The inside lip was chosen because it is rich in blood vessels, has no pigment to block light, and doesn't lose blood flow in trauma patients. They successfully measured the average diameter of the red and white blood cells and also calculated the percent volume of the different cell types, a key measurement for many medical diagnoses. Currently, the probe is shoebox sized. They hope to have a thumb sized prototype within the next year. They are also working on a second generation system with higher penetration depth. A paper on the device is published in Biomedical Optics Express. A pioneering study to gauge the toxicity of quantum dots in primates has found the tiny crystals to be safe over a one-year period, a hopeful outcome for those seeking new ways to battle diseases like cancer through nanomedicine. The study is likely the first to test the safety of quantum dots in primates. The crystals are being eyed for use in image-guided surgery, light-activated therapies, and sensitive diagnostic tests. Cadmium selenide quantum dots are among the most studied, with potential applications not only in medicine, but as components of solar cells, quantum computers, LEDs, and more. The scientists found that four rhesus monkeys injected with the dots remained in normal health over 90 days. Blood and biochemical markers stayed in typical ranges, and major organs developed no abnormalities. The animals also did not lose weight. Two monkeys observed for an additional year also showed no signs of illness. The authors caution that more research is needed to determine the nanocrystal's long-term effects in primates. Most of the potentially toxic cadmium from the quantum dots stayed in the liver, spleen, and kidneys of the animals studied over the 90-day period. The work appears in Nature Nanotechnology Online. A new technique that combines the light of three powerful infrared telescopes allows astronomers to see objects 130 million light-years away without having to build massive and expensive telescopes specifically designed for that purpose. An international collaboration, including researchers from the University of California, Santa Barbara, and the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy in Bonn, Germany, combined the light from the three 8-meter telescopes at the Very Large Telescope Interferometer at the Paranal Observatory in Chile using AMBER, the focal instrument of the VLTI. The initial observations of the black hole in the center of the galaxy NGC 3783 used the Keck telescopes in Hawaii. These 10-meter telescopes are capable of resolving objects the size of a football field from a distance of the Earth to the Moon, but were still not powerful enough to resolve the black hole's accretion ring. To achieve that angular resolution, the astronomers needed a telescope 10 times more powerful. Such a telescope would have to have a diameter of 130 meters, but the largest telescopes being built right now are only 30 to 40 meters. However, using AMBER, they were able to achieve the resolution needed to see the hot ring of dust called an active galactic nucleus. The overarching goal is to learn how the supermassive black holes that lie in the center of galaxies are fueled. Observatories in Austria and Switzerland transmitted a high-power laser beam to each other by bouncing it off an orbiting satellite. They hope to apply the method to space debris detection and targeting in shuttles and other devices in low Earth orbit. Researchers at Zimmerwald Observatory at the Astronomical Institute of the University of Bern and the Institute for Space Research of the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Graz independently determined the distance to a satellite in orbit. The two observatories each fired a short, weak laser pulse at the satellite, which was outfitted with retroreflectors that redirected the light right back to the observatory whence it came. Taking the measurements a step further, Graz researchers borrowed a high-power laser and shined it on a passing Envisat satellite. The light was allowed to reflect diffusely off it in all directions to determine whether the AIUB researchers could detect it. They hoped the diffuse method could be used to detect objects that do not have retroreflectors, such as space debris. In a story we're continuing to follow, the first instrument for the James Webb Space Telescope was completed and handed over to NASA. The mid-infrared instrument known as MIRI, a pioneering camera and spectrograph, is so sensitive that it could see a candle on one of Jupiter's moons. MIRI's components were built by a consortium of 11 European countries and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. 
The instrument was assembled and tested at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory near Oxford, England. The Webb Space Telescope contains four science instruments, but only the MIRI sees light in the mid-infrared region, recording in the wavelength from 5 to 28 microns and revealing planets, comets, asteroids, as well as dust warm by starlight. The successor to the Hubble Space Telescope will view the first galaxies that formed in the early universe, among other missions. It is working towards a 2018 launch date. That's it for this edition of Light Matters, the industry's only weekly newscast. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters at photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.